Sometimes I think we get so lost in the fishtail that we forget about the human element. Jonah prayed two prayers, one prior to the fulfillment of the prophecy and one after the fulfillment of the prophecy. Now in this episode, we're going to look at the first prayer. You see, up to this point, we've tracked Jonah's story and he has made a decision to vacate his ministry at least this assignment. Now if I can add a note here, uh, recently I heard a rabbi say that if an Old Testament prophet refused to prophesy, he could be put to death. So I guess the question you have to ask is, what was Jonah wrestling with that was worth death in his mind? You see, for them this wasn't just religion, it was their life, it was their culture. At least those who generally embraced the call. I think jo Jeremiah said it best, it was like fire. So as we near the conclusion of this look at Jonah, let's look at the first prayer that caught the attention of heaven, the petition of a servant prophet who surrendered to the king. Now let's read Jonah 2 and we actually are going to read verses 1 through 10. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of a fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then said I, I am cast out of thy sight, yet will I look again to thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The depth closed round about me. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet thou hast brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came unto thee in thy holy temple. They'd observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish. So let's peel back the layers of Jonah's prayer as we look at the verses. Now in verse 1 he calls God Lord. He understands his position should be and should have been one of submission. That wasn't the case earlier. In verse 2, Joan acknowledged that the affliction has changed his perspective. In fact, in Psalms 119, David says he wouldn't have learned God's statues without affliction. In other words, God showed David how to respect what God expected. Now verses 3 and 4, the prophet feels this sense of abandonment. Now the truth is, what he is feeling was what it feels like when you reject God, and you can no longer sense his presence. Can you imagine spending eternity separated from God? Verses 4 through 6, this was a watery grave that defiance and rebellion had buried him in. It was a trap he had willingly entered. Again he cries out, Lord. Jonah's life is fading from him. His eternal soul is at stake and only God can save him. Does that sound familiar? We disobey God. We get in situations and the only one who can help us is God. As much as he is our Heavenly Father, we can never forget he is God. We are but a vapor. He is Lord of all and Lord over all. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. Let's move on. Verses 7 through 9. Jonah says, When I became overwhelmed by my circumstance, I remembered your mercy. Sometimes the situation's intended lesson is to show us what we are withholding from others is the thing we may one day need for ourselves. Finally, he closes the prayer with thanksgiving and a promise to keep his vow. What he is saying is, 
I promise to give God this, and I will. Now, like a good father, God nudges us, sometimes softly and sometimes not so softly, in order to refocus our attention on what really matters. And then in verse 10, now God speaks to the fish. Recently, I read an article about a fishing a fisherman who was lobster diving and was almost swallowed by a whale. He remembers it being quite a harrowing experience. But in his case, the whale spit him out immediately. You see, Jonah's fish was on assignment from God. No way was this fish going to do anything other than what God wanted. It is only after God speaks to the large fish that Jonah is released. What that should tell us is that when God decided on how long a course should run, no one can change it except him. Now the question remains, has Jonah learned anything? Well, we'll save that answer for the next and final episode.